just the uh, the front of the Times. You mentioned the main story there, but actually the story at the top of it, which is pretty interesting this morning. Um, restaurants ordered to shrink pizzas and pies. No. In obesity fight. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. I mean, it's not going to happen tomorrow, and it's this is about this relationship between regulators and the government, mm. like Public <clears throat> Health England, and the industries that serve up our pizzas and pies. But we already see kind of calories, don't we, in most restaurants, if you want to see. And, and you, you can get pizzas now in certain restaurants where they have a hole in the middle. They yeah, just put a I lot mean, of salad in. It's yes, a pizza bit, yes, they it's do, not yeah. Pizza, is it? It's but, not a pizza, is <laughs> it? On the, on the calorie thing, it's they're saying um, for a, night out. a pie should be limited to 695 calories, which yeah. doesn't mean much to me on the face of it. It doesn't sound like much. No, I think you're probably on... You're looking at me as if I'm a pie expert there, Charlie, but I think, <laughs> I think that's on the cusp of, you know... The what crust. Consider like a half time match day pie. <laughs> so I'd, more filling, less no, pastry. It's interesting though. Can they just tell restaurants to do this? It would have. History tells us that it'd be more like a sugar tax kind of thing that might have to force them to do it. It's unlikely you're going to see a law implemented that says your pizza can only have eight pieces of pepperoni on top of it or something. Do you know, I didn't realise that a pizza couldn't, could not contain more than 928 calories. Well, no, that's, well, I know that's the limit, but I just kind of would have thought that pizzas would have contained loads of calories. Well, 928, people consider that. So if you like flying or if you don't like flying, either way, I think this is going to interest you. The world's longest non-stop flight is in the air. And Sean, you've been tracking it. Keeping a very close eye, it's still in the air. Good. Good job somebody's doing this. Morning, everybody. Uh, talked a bit about it over this week. It's on its way. The flight is from Singapore to New York, expected to take nearly 19 hours overall. We can have a quick look about how it's getting on on this radar map. It's uh, on its way over Canada at the moment. It took off about 24 minutes late, would you believe, for the first one. Right now, the SQ-22, as it's known, it's covered 7,000 miles. It's got about 3,000 more to go. And we can see, yeah, there it is over northern Canada, I think it is. Uh, one man I'm surprised isn't actually on the flight, but fortunately for us, we can talk to him. He's travel editor of The Independent, Simon Calder. He's on the roof of our London studios, keeping an eye out for it this morning. <laughs> morning, Simon. Morning. Did it sell uh, out? The big question, did they manage to sell all the tickets? Oh, they certainly did. There may have been one empty seat, I understand, but uh, they'll be happy with the payload on this. And bear in mind, there are no cheap seats on this flight. There are 67 business class lie flat beds, and then there's another 94 premium economy with lots of legroom, not quite as much as Charlie and Naga get, but uh, quite enough for the long haul. So yes, they believe that people will pay a lot of cash for this, which is just as well, because it's an incredibly expensive undertaking. You've got, of course, two sets of pilots, extra cabin crew, because uh, they need to get some rest along the way. Uh, you're also burning stupendous amounts of uh, fuel. This uh, plane, as you all have seen, went over Anchorage, Alaska. If they'd stopped there, they could probably burn about 30% less on the journey, I calculate. Uh, they're going to be burning about 120 metric tonnes, but that's better than it used to be. Well, um, up course, until Simon, it's better than it used to be. Sorry to yeah. interrupt. Better than it used to be, but it's unaffordable for most people. Where are we seeing this kind of technology that's in this long-haul flight in other more affordable parts of the airline industry? Well, the big uh, opportunity for British travellers has been um, flying from London to Perth. I was on the uh, original flight, and unlike uh, this one, they've got genuine economy class there, um, I know to my, uh, to my cost. Um, but the big uh, the developments that we're seeing with the Airbus A350 ULR, this new aircraft, uh, developments of the Boeing 777 um, are going to transform long-haul flying. The really key route that everybody wants to see, or at least Qantas does, it's putting lots of money into this, is from London to Sydney, Australia, right. which is going to beat this uh, current flight by a couple of hours. Last um, one, Simon. Yeah. Uh, is there ever a length of time of flight where it actually becomes a health concern? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, you've got to move around. This is a great opportunity, not just for uh, well-heeled business travellers who need to get from Singapore to New York really quickly, but it's also a good opportunity for people perhaps who are less mobile, who don't want to change planes along the way, but you absolutely need to have a good health regime in place. If you think about everything you've done since five o'clock last night, British time, um, and you've still got another three hours flying time. That's what's facing the people on there. Um, they, they've got to uh, uh, keep healthy. But yeah, once, once we can fly London to Sydney, there are no more great long haul flights left. That'll be it. And
Qantas thinks that they will be uh, uh, doing that by 2022. Simon, thank you very much. Sorry for interrupting you there. A bit short of time this morning. Simon Calder from The Independent. I need one more flight left to do. Once Sydney to London's done. That's it. You're done. No, I'm, I'm off. Do you know, we've got so much in the programme. That's why we're short of time. Loads coming up. Now, the High Street Cafe chain Patisserie Valerie is facing collapse today after reporting potential fraud in its accounts earlier this week. Sean, so we heard about this first earlier in the week. Where, where, where does it stand now? Well, since that, that news first broke about these financial irregularities, the company say possibly fraudulent, they then discovered there'd been a winding up order from HMRC uh, with a tax bill of more than a million pounds that had come in and the, those at the very top of the company weren't aware of it. The chairman wasn't aware of it. Uh, and so then we heard yesterday, unless there is a significant cash injection into the business, then effectively it will not be able to continue trading as it is. Now, with other retailers, if we were to put it into those terms, that's going into administration. And then the business either has to find another sell, uh, a buyer for the business or it ends up being wound down itself. It's a horrible, horrible day for staff there who... Uh, waking up this morning, really, waiting for some news. Because, of course, there could be a cash injection. There's one, the entrepreneur, Luke Johnson, who's a major shareholder in the business. You know, he's been a big part of the chain's growth. Will he decide to put more, money, more of his money in? Will anybody else? Uh, and they're the questions that are really being looked at today. And Partisu, Valerie, I mean, it's a major presence on the high street. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of branches. Yeah, more than 200 uh, cafes around the UK. Other brands as well. There's the Drucker's Vienna brand that people might be familiar with on their high street as well. So it's not, not just Patisserie uh, Valerie, also Phil Potts Cafe. Uh, so 200 odd cafes. And unlike a lot of retailers, I, I just keep, there was one quote from an uh, anonymous member of staff there saying, are we going to get paid in three weeks' time? Um, because they will have not had those updates that we'd normally talk about if a retailer is really struggling over weeks and weeks and months and months. This was out of the blue earlier this week. Uh, so a lot of uncertainty for staff there and those right at the top of the business scrambling to try and keep it alive, really. Sean, thanks. For Three. Not such exciting um, news for some companies, Sean. Mm. It's exciting news, but yeah, exciting. it's not great. It's not great news. Um, share prices have been struggling a little bit for some. Yeah, they've taken a hit over the last few days. If you want to look at the UK's leading stock market, the stock index, the FTSE 100, which is our 100 biggest companies mm. that are listed. That actually yesterday was down, drum roll, 1.94%. It's taken, it's been going down steadily over recent days and weeks. Uh, we've seen global stock markets do something similar as well. And they, they all tie in, it's all part of the same story. If we have a look at the chart here of what's happened with the FTSE 100 this year. You can see earlier in the year, you know, me or Ben or Steph would have been sitting here sort of uh, when that March time talking about, oh, there's been a bit of a fall in the markets, people thinking interest rates may be going up too quickly, increasing borrowing costs for businesses and everybody around the world. Is this going to be set in or will it bounce back? Well, actually, you can see it bounced back pretty strongly and then it's been middling around a little bit. But those kind of things have returned again recently, those concerns, and you can see that important line at the end there. That's what's happened over recent days. Why do we care? Well, we care because it's, it's what's going on in the world at the minute. It's the global economy that many of our big businesses that employ lots of people in the UK rely upon how to does, do well. How does it affect someone who doesn't have shares, stocks and shares? Well, it, it's, it's the economy oh. full stop, isn't it? So if big businesses employ lots of people, so if you work in any way for one of the big banks, the big pharmaceutical companies, the big tobacco companies that are all in the FTSE 100, or if your life is linked to them in some way, if they're not doing as well as they were before, then all of a sudden that can have an impact on the British economy. And, that's, and, and it's, it's come down to trade wars, worries about interest rates. You can guess who might have had something to say about this. No, I think the Fed is uh, making a mistake. They're so tight. I think the Fed has gone crazy. So you could say that, well, that's a lot of safety, actually, and it is a lot of safety, and it gives you a lot of margin. But I think the Fed has gone crazy. That's Donald Trump using a lot of jargon there. Yeah, it really was, wasn't it? Yeah, um, but, he, but he, his main point is, why is my central bank, the equivalent of the Bank of England in the United States, why are they putting up interest rates and increasing borrowing costs and creating these concerns? Well, they think it's because the US economy is doing pretty well. On the subject of jargon, uh, when you were explaining the Wiggly line, uh, you said the <laughs> phrase, uh, it's, it's been middling about. Yes. 
Yeah. Official term. I was just going to. I was just going to say Giles Brandreth is in later on. Oh, yes. Sort of word meister, and he's picking up on all. Oh, it, it, middling, what, middling about middling. Well, I no, know I think what you mean. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's not. It's got not going up. It's not going down. It's middling it's, about. It's, I don't middling think you need the about. Maybe. It's just it's middling. I don't know. You look at it. It is, is middling, middling about a, word? a little bit. Yes, middling's a word. Something can middle. <coughs> anyway, yes. Yeah, so you've got all of that. You've got obviously the fact. You, lots of people's pensions and savings. If you've got an ISA in the FTSE 100, that is can be very reliant on this chart of course, particularly. Of course. Uh, so one to keep an eye on. The next couple of weeks will really dictate whether we see that bounce back we saw earlier in the year or whether it'll keep going down and the concerns keep growing. Or indeed if it's middling about. Who knows? Uh, 7.57 is facing collapse today after reporting potential frauds in its accounts early this week. The story first emerged at the beginning of the week and there were concerns about just how that might work out for the staff particularly. I mean, there's two parts of this, isn't there, Sean? Mm. There's the, the big story about the allegations of fraud and whatever, and then there's the practical reality of, of staff concerns about what's going to happen next. Yeah, and it feels a bit different to other retailers that we've seen either going bust or struggling because this really came out of the blue for staff this week when we heard about these financial irregularities that the company said they weren't aware of before, potentially fraudulent. The chief finance officer uh, at the company has been suspended. Uh, and since then, we've discovered, the company's discovered as well, that HMRC, the tax man, has uh, got a winding up petition in place against the company because they owe them more than a million pounds of tax. There's a black hole at the company. Effectively, they thought they had millions and millions, tens of millions of pounds more than they actually do. So what they're saying is what we heard yesterday, and this is the big decision for them today to find from somewhere, is they need a cash injection into the business. Otherwise, it can't continue trading as it is. 200 odd cafes around the country. There's other chains as well. Druck of Vienna is one people might be familiar with. Two and a half thousand staff or more. And we've heard from one this week saying, don't know if I'm going to get paid in three weeks' time. And that's just, you know, in a simple sentence, encapsulates that kind of feeling that you'd be waking up to today. It's such a scary situation to be in for any employee. It, it is. And uh, so, yeah, today it'll, there'll be some big decisions to be made.